So using our knowledge from the previous video of how to do instancing, I want to use that same trick to instance these two cubes. Remember that the data is the same, but we have to set up a different uniform for each draw call in this paint GL. We do our perspective projection and reuse this projection matrix with the translate, rotate, smash it all together, set up our full transform and send that down to the shader and then call draw. We do the exact same work here and send that down to the shader using a uniform parameter and then we call draw again. I want one draw call. I want this full transform matrix to vary per instance so that I don't have to do this uniform stuff. It'd be nice just to set it up once and, and be happy. So let's set that up here where we did it in the last case. Our vertex buffer, our index buffer, we're pulling the shape data again. Right here we'll do our transformation matrix buffer. And we could put this data in any buffer. I could just stick it in the vertex buffer at the end if I wanted to, but I think it makes more sense logically to put it in a, another buffer just as a learner, but maybe as a game programmer I'd actually do that. You go to the effort of actually sticking the matrices at the end of our vertice array. But anyway, GLUint transformation matrix buffer ID, that's a long enough ID for you. GL gen buffers. I want one buffer. You know, I could generate all my buffers at once. I have a gen buffers, gen buffers, gen buffers. I could generate all the buffers at once. I could say three, and then pass an array of three GLU ints here to optimize this GL gen buffers call. But I think as learners, it's nice just to do it one at a time, though it's probably not optimal in an actual game setting. Address of transformation, matrix buffer ID, a GL bind buffer. GL array buffer binding point. I want to use the transformation matrix buffer ID. And you might think, wait a minute, wait a minute. We already bound a buffer to the array binding buffer point, and you're binding a new buffer to that array binding point. Doesn't that mess up our shape or our geometry data pointers? And the answer is no. Remember in previous videos, once we do the attrib pointer calls, these attribs are good on the actual buffers that are currently bound to the array buffers. So these attrib pointer calls will go with the vertex buffer ID because that's what's bound to the array buffer binding target at that point. And then we can go ahead and change that array buffer binding target. And these attributes will still pull their data from what was bound to the array buffer binding point before. Anyway, bind to the array buffer binding point transformation matrix buffer ID. We actually need to store our buffers or not our buffers, our matrices. So mate for full transforms and we'll grab this data down here. I'm just gonna, we're, we're done with this uniform and we're going to need the projection matrix, need the translation, but we don't need this anymore. We won't need the draw elements anymore. We'll need this translation and rotation, but we won't need this anymore. And the draw elements will come modify that later. So I think we're good just to grab this, control X and put it up here. Make this an array, gets, put that down there. Control enter, paste it. Let's move the projection matrix out here. We only need to create the projection matrix once. And then in here, we'll say projection matrix times the translate times the rotate. Look at me combining all of that into one. Same thing here, projection matrix times the translate times the rotate. And bring that up, shift tab to bring that back a little bit. So we have two matrices. Here's one matrix. It's the result of the projection times the translation times the rotation. Here's the second matrix, projection times translation times rotation. And this is complaining because this is a static method that is not inside of our GL window. Remember, I was being lazy and I didn't scope a lot of these functions into our GL window. So I'm actually going to go to the effort of putting that there and then collapse that. Let's put all the, all these, I really shouldn't have been lazy. I should have put all of these as member functions of our class. 
It's kind of dirty of me to mix class and static functions like that that are not part of the class. I need to move these declarations into the header file, don't blink. Okay, now we don't have red squigglies anymore because width and height are instance functions on our class. And now that this function is part of this class, you can see I went to the header file and I added all these functions as part of our class. Many of these could probably be static. I could put static on the front of them, but I'll just leave them as instance for now. And then the only thing that could go wrong here is the width and the height could possibly not be correct until the paint GL function calls. So our aspect ratio might get messed up. We'll see. Uh, set up the full transformation matrices. This is in our data, in our RAM on the stack. We need to send that down to our buffer now. So GL, GL buffer data. Want to send the data down to the buffer that's bound <laughs> to the GLRA buffer binding target. It's going to be the size of full transforms, which is 16 floats per matrix times two matrices times the size of a float. I'll just let the compiler calculate that for us. The address of the first byte is full transforms. And then GL static draw. We are not going to change this data very often. We're not going to change it at all. So that's what static means, and we're going to use it to draw, which means read from it. Uh, not or, yeah, read from it to draw, but not write to it. Anyway, if we were doing an actual camera, which we won't, which we will do in the very near future, where the camera moves around, then obviously these matrices would change often, and then we would say dynamic draw, meaning we're going to change the contents of this buffer often, but we'll still use it to draw. Blah 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 blah. We need to go and set this data as our input, our quote unquote varying input or our instance input into our shader. So control alt L, bring up the vertex shader code. This is no longer a uniform. It will be an in layout location equals two mate for full transform transform matrix. Then the rest of this is still good to go, but we need to set up our trib pointers on this side. So when we say GL vertex a trib pointer, and for index, we're going to say two because our matrix is at location two. So for attribute two, we need to say the size, which is the number of elements per attribute. Before when we did this, we said we had three floats because in our vertices, we're storing three floats for the position and we're storing three floats for the color. Well, you may think on the matrix we need to say 16 floats, but these attributes are actually sent in as groups of four. So the largest value I can actually put here is a four, which means I'm going to take up a lot more attributes. I have four sets of four. It's a four by four matrix. This matrix here, let me just draw it real quickly. Here's our matrix. Each row of the matrix takes up four floats. There are four rows. So then we end up with 16 floats, but this will be attribute two, attribute three, attribute four, attribute five. Even though I don't explicitly say that in our shader code, it's implied because this is a matrix four. So we're actually going to take up attributes two, three, four, and five. We have to enable all of those attributes array, and we also have to do the pointer data for that as well on the client side or in the C++ side. So. Here we go, normalize, GL faults as always. The stride will be the size of a mate four. And the pointer will be uh, void star size of size of float times zero. Parenthesis, parenthesis, control L, control V, 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 V. It's going to be attribute two, three, four, and five. Two three, four, and five. They are all four floats. Don't normalize them. The stride's the same for each one. But with this pointer, we have to point in. So I can't remember if I showed this trick to you or not, but essentially this, let me just explain it again. This last argument takes a void star pointer, which back in the old, old, old days of OpenGL, we'd actually give it a pointer to our client side data. But now it's just an offset into our buffer. We already sent the data down to our buffer right here. So we have to say, well, where is attribute two going to? 
start out at? Well, it's going to be start out at 0 here. It's the 0th item in the buffer. So I'll multiply that by 0 here. Attribute 3 is right here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4 floats in. So I have to say size of float times 4 floats in. Attribute 4 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times the size of a float in. So 8, and then the next one is 12. I almost naturally want to put a 16 there because I'm used to counting by twos. Okay, so I have all of our trib pointers to set up where our data is in our array. The stride's the same. All that's good. We need to enable all these attributes. So gl enable vertex a trib array. We've seen this trick before, and I actually didn't really understand why we had to do this before, but I found out, and I'll show that in a, in a future video. Anyway, but for now, we need to enable two, three, four, and five, two, three, four, and five, and then most importantly, we need to do our gl vertex a trib divisor. For attribute two, we want a divisor of one. And for attribute three, four, and five, we want a divisor of one for all these. Look how repetitive this is, but when we say matrix, we're pulling in four attributes at a time, so we have to do all the work for all these. I guess I could do this as a loop. I could easily do this as a loop and calculate all that, but I think typing it out forces you to see it as a learner. Uh, we got our divisor, and the rest is just draw elements. Last argument is we have two instances, and that will set up all of these transformation matrices. These matrices, instead of being sent down as uniform data as we had before, now it's going to be varying data per instance. So let's control the five of that. Hope it all works. Of course, it doesn't work. It doesn't build. GL draw elements does not. Oh, it needs to be draw elements instance. Control of five. Hopefully, we get our two cubes. And voila. Look at that. We did instancing. That's really cool. That worked. <laughs> I was worried that wouldn't work because that was just so complex to set up. But the way we got instancing is we sent down this quote-unquote varying data once per instance, though. It varies per instance, not per vertex. And then we have a single GL draw elements instance, two instances with our proper divisors set up here.